Hey guys, thanks for watching today. This is Heather coming at you with A Well-Paced Life. And I am so excited today because I'm doing something that I've always wanted to do but I haven't done yet. I am here at the Women's Laser Center in St. Louis and I'm here with Susie Lynch. She's going to be doing my treatment. And today we're doing the microneedling PRP, which is plasma rich proteins on my face and it's something I've always wanted to do. I have some acne scarring from my past and it helps just a magnitude of things of which I will list up above. Um, before I forget, don't forget to subscribe down below and let's get started. Watch with me guys. Your face has been numbing for a while and I'm going to start removing it with some alcohol so you'll have that little wonderful stinky scent. And I'm going to start with your forehead, the needling process here. Then as we move to the different areas of your face, I'll remove the numbing agent at that time. Okay. Weeks and allow your skin's time to heal and for the collagen cascade to have completed its cycle. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just kind of interrupting that and you're not really gonna have the most favorable outcome. Right. It's gonna start dripping a little bit of the your own platelets on here so that we can use that as our slip and glide and needle it in. And I'll be continuing to do that throughout the needling process. This pen does make a lot of noise and a little bit of vibration, which is kind of nice because it's very distracting for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, how's that feel? Okay? Okay. Is this one of the best treatments for acne scars? I find that it's a very good treatment for acne scars. Um, sometimes I will use it in conjunction with the combination therapy with our um, Icon 1540 laser, mm -hmm. which helps to stimulate collagen and elastin as well and soften um, the appearance of the scarring itself. Mm -hmm. So you said a series of three with each treatment, do you go any deeper then? Um, not necessarily. I usually only go deeper if the um, skin has some significant scarring to break up that scar tissue mm -hmm. or if the person has thicker skin with maybe a little bit of a fat pad underneath, mm -hmm. then quite often I'll start at a deeper level. Okay. But normally 0.5 gives you a sufficient treatment to reach that collagen level um, and have a great treatment. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody has seen those pictures of Kim Kardashian with her bloody face. That's really not what you look like or should look like after a micro needling. It's not necessary to do something like that to have an effective um, and great outcome. Kim who? I don't think I know her. Kim Kardashian? <laughs> well, we do have her to thank for showing those pictures in essence to um, bring light to the just the general public about microneedling in general. It's been around since the early 80s and it was really kind of a process and treatment that was reserved for the rich and shameless. So by her coming out and sharing her lovely face with everyone, we were... Um, it would gave it recognition so that the masses got to utilize that great technology. 
And you're still doing all right? Yeah. Great. It's not painful at all. It's a like great numbing thing I use. So besides fine lines and acne scars, what else does it help? It can also help break up pigmentation on the skin. I have had clients that had larger age spots, sunspots, or melasma, and it helps to break up that pigment um, so your body can better evacuate you know, what you're treating there. I've seen some really phenomenal results with it just doing that. And what's the benefit of the platelets? So the platelets um, help to stimulate your own growth factors. They start talking to those, and um, which is what we want. We want our own growth factors instead of some additional outside that are created from other human beings. Mm -hmm. This way we're reducing any chances of um, an allergic reaction to something or you know a, a reaction that we don't want. So it's better to use your own. Um, skin and health's ability to stimulate those growth factors, which just really ramps up the healing process and you get just phenomenal results. Right. You can do microneedling without PRP, but why would you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I ask. Your face is a little thirsty, so it's absorbing this really well. Good. And I can see some of your little, it's more pinpoint type um, acne scarring. It's yeah. not really deep or severe. So you have a little bit of hyperpigmentation down here, maybe a little, little mm -hmm. melasma. So we can help break that up a little bit. And it's generally recommended that you get at least three treatments to get you know some really good results. And like I said, those are done about four weeks apart. So do you recommend any maintenance throughout the year? Um, you can do um, like once a year a maintenance treatment of this. Um, you can also do home roller needling. However, um, I recommend that if you're going to do that, you have someone like me um, help you um, guide you in the correct way to do that um, because you want to make sure that you're not overstimulating the skin and it's never getting time to heal properly. I fully expected walking into this for this to be painful. It's not at all. Everybody's surprised when you talk about yeah. using needles. There's 14 little 32 gauge needles. And a 32 gauge needle is very tiny. It's like the needle that I'm using to drip the plasma onto your face. So they're very small, like as in what a di diabetic might use to give themselves insulin. So they're thinking, oh, this is gonna be just awful. But we make certain that you're very comfortable while you're doing that. basically of poking holes in the skin. <laughs> so we, we're creating a controlled injury. So we're creating these little channels enabling us to let um, product go deeper into the skin than it can on its own as one factor. The other factor is we're creating these injuries instead of like just sloughing off all your skin, we're just reaching down to that level of collagen so that we can stimulate it. And since we get older, we lose the ability to produce collagen as we do when we're children. So 
So then that's when we start to get, you know, that less plump look in our skin. Mm -hmm. So something like this aids in stimulating collagen. Uh, taking an oral vitamin C is very helpful as well when you're going through procedures like this or on a daily basis. It's a water-soluble vitamin, so whatever your body doesn't need, you'll excrete that through your... Um, Oh, yeah. your urine on a daily basis but what it does is it has to have your system has to have that for the collagen to be stimulated as well so it's very beneficial This is something that you can do if you have filler or Botox. Yes, so here's the thing. You can do this if you've had, there's not been any real clinical trials, but you know companies have relied on physicians and what they've done. So the recommendation is if you get Botox and fillers, you need to wait a minimum of two weeks and then you can get these treatments. If you were to get one of these treatments, you could get Botox on the same day or filler. However, you're already creating some inflammation in the skin, and I don't recommend it mm -hmm. because then you might get a false sense of, you know, putting the filler in, right. and it may be that your skin's already a little, uh, you know, inflamed and have some edema, and once that calms down, you're thinking, I think I should have had a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I don't recommend them on the same day, although you will find there are people out there that will treat on the same day. chiller it um, produces coarse cold air so it gets really really super cold and this is just going to help some of the inflammation and redness just to cool the skin down a little 